Hello, again, this is Crystal Haney at Bays Mountain Park and Planetarium. We're going to wrap up our snake series today with how to be safe around snakes and why snakes are important to us. The snake I have out today is Sable. This is our resident black king snake. This is a female snake. Now, we have different black snakes in our area. We have the black king snake that I have in my hand. We have a regular black rat snake, and then we also have a black racer. Now, a lot of people confuse the black rat and the black king together. The black king, however, like the one on my arm here, is a little bit shorter than a black rat. The black king snakes get three to four feet long. A black rat snake can get up to eight feet long. Another difference is you can see how shiny the skin on this black king snake is. Their genus Lampropeltis means shiny skin, so they're very shiny, they look almost wet, and then they have yellow spots along their sides. A black rat snake is going to be a very dull black, and they have white on their chin and belly, so they do look a little different. Now the snake I have in my hand is very unique to our area because this is the kind of snake that will eat other snakes. So king snakes, and we do have other species of king snakes in our area. We have the mole king snake, the scarlet king snake, and the eastern milk snake is also in the family. They are able to eat other snakes, including venomous ones. Let's say the black king snake here came against our resident uh, copperhead and the copperhead was to bite the black king snake. Well, they have an enzyme in their blood that breaks down the protein and the venom. They're kind of immune to it and then he, she could turn around and eat that copperhead. So they are uh, neat snakes in that fashion that they will eat other snakes, including venomous ones. But again, this is sabled, our resident black king snake. So we're gonna to talk today a little bit why snakes are important and how we can safely be around snakes without getting bit. Now the reason snakes are very important and they are um, protected here in Tennessee is because of the impact they have on the rodent population. Most of their diet consists of mice and rats. One mouse can have at least 12 babies a month. So imagine that mouse reproduced all year. That mouse would have about 144 children in a year's time. So imagine if we didn't have snakes and other predators to eat those mice, we'd have mice all over the place. But with the snake here, they can consume a lot of those to keep the balance in the rodent population where we don't have mice running all around our house and inside where we don't want them. So they are very good in controlling the rodent population. That is the most beneficial thing that we um, can say about snakes. Now, another thing about snakes is that even though they're a predator, they can also be a prey. Bobcats, coyotes, foxes, they like to prey on snakes as well. So they play double role in the food chain. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't want snakes around my house, or when I go out, I don't want to see a snake. Now, if you go out into a park, more than likely, you probably won't see a snake, but it could happen. On a nice sunny day, if you were out um, on a trail, they might have uh, crawled out to the middle of the trail to sun bask in the sunshine. So, you're thinking, well, what should I do if I come across something like that, or what should I do if I find them in my house? So I will tell you this, if you find them around your house, they're kind of doing you a favor. They are eating your mice and rats for you because snakes go where the food is. So if there was nothing for them to eat there, they wouldn't uh, hang around. So if you find one in your house, the best thing to do is take a big trash can, knock it to the side, take a broom or something of the like and push the snake into the trash can. Take it outside, maybe you want to take it a little ways off from your house and release the snake. But uh, if you have them around your house, just make sure you have no holes that they can get into your house, um, things like that. Do uh, remind children if they see a snake not to touch it or approach it to get an adult. But again, we do want to protect them and have them around because they are eating all those rodents. Now, if you're out on a hiking trail and you see one, the best thing to do is just give it some space and kind of sidestep around it. Snakes do not have a good sense of eyesight. They don't see very far, so unless you're really close to the snake, the snake cannot see you. Now, they may smell you and know you're around, but they can't see you well enough to strike at you. So give it a nice wide path, go a, kind of a half circle around the snake if it was on the trail, and just let it be. Don't try to move it from the trail or pick it up or a you know, touch it or anything like that. Just give it space. Now, another thing about trail hiking is you want to stay on the trail. A lot of times the snakes will not be on the trail. They're off to the side laying in some uh, leaf litter or laying next to a fallen tree. So if you get off this trail and start wandering through dead leaves, stepping over logs, you might accidentally step on a snake that you cannot see. Some of our snakes blend in really well with the environment, including the copperheads. So what you wanna do is stay on the trail. That way you can see where your feet are. 
If you're at home and you go inside a barn or a shed, and maybe you have lots of barrels or buckets, you know, don't be reaching your hands into places you can't see what might be lying in that bucket or um, what might be lying behind the bucket. Um, I know a lot of farmers like black snakes in their barns because they keep the mice out of them for them. So, but you, you might not know where that snake is laying. So just make sure you can see your hands, you make sure you can see your feet, what they are touching. And then again, just give the snake space. Don't approach it, don't try to pick it up, don't pet it. And so a snake is uh, just as scared of you as you are of it. It sees you as this big creature coming towards it, trying to touch it or pick it up. It thinks you're trying to eat it. So of course its natural defense is to bite. So if you give them their space and leave them alone, teach your children if they see one to not touch it, don't approach it, tell an adult instead, um, more than likely no one will ever have a problem uh, with getting snake bit. So, again, just remember they are important to our ecosystem, keeping the balance in the rodent population. They are very beneficial for us. Again, give them space, just like you would any wild animal. And uh, if you don't like them around your house, you can, you know, gently remove them and take them to another area instead. But again, they are important. We want them around and let them to do their job, okay? So again, this is Sable, the black uh, king snake. And uh, this is my favorite snake, by the way. So hopefully you'll get to come and see him sometime. And I hope you've enjoyed the snake series um, that we have uh, videoed here for you at Bays Mountain. And again, we'll hopefully get to see you up here at the Herpetarium very soon. Thank you all.